Well, I'm back. I keep saying that my last time, but the Lord keeps giving me somebody to look up to and set me straight and uh, stand in awe of. And, uh, and this week, I'm going to sh give a shout out to a young man. Uh, he's got his own Facebook thing, and he's my new hero. And that's Luke Long. Now, if you ain't watched Juice with Luke, you have certainly missed something. I want you to know uh, he has encouraged me. And in a way, he showed me where a lot of things that I do wrong because he has such joy in doing it. But yet, when I do it, I have so much stress. Uh, I've got to switch that around somehow. Now. So he's my new hero. And I'm telling you, if you want to see something enjoyable, take time to watch Juice with Luke. You, you absolutely will love it. Um, let's get started with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for thank you for, for all you do for us, Lord. We just pray that you can forgive us of our many sins. Father, we lift this uh, this series that we're doing, Father, up to you that you'd anoint it in a special way. Father, I pray that you'd enter my body and you'd give me the, the words to say that my thoughts would be your thoughts, Father. This has nothing to do with me. I'm here to serve you, Father, in any way that you tell me. Uh, Father, and, and at this time, I'd like to lift up my Sunday school class, Father, and Miss Claire and Miss Doris and Miss Monk and Miss Judy and uh, Miss June and Miss uh, Eva May and Miss Arlene and Mr. Pinky and Danny and Becky and uh, Jerry and Hilda and Charlie and Alice and Vardell and Jeannie. And Father, I lift them up to you that you'd keep them safe, safe for, Father, that you would help them to understand what's going on around them, Father, that they not live their life in fear. And Father, I pray for this pandemic that you'd send somebody, some uh, out there has the knowledge, Father, for the cure for this. We can. Uh, that's the only way we're going to see any sense of normalcy uh, is to find a cure. And Father, you're the only one with the cure. So we just pray, Father, that you have mercy on us, uh, that you, you'd help us out. Now, Father, again, I, as I said, I, I, I thank you for all you do for me, and I, I thank you, Father, for... Uh, let me watch little Luke this week, and uh, Father, I've been encouraged by it, and I, I just hope I've learned something from it. I may not add, it may take me a while, but Father, I'm, I'm getting there. For your precious name I pray, amen. Um, you know, we're guilty of, uh, you know, this lesson, is, and I'm going to read some stuff out of this thing for you directly. Um of recruiting people to come to church and people are are trying to find a church but they're looking for certain things they want a preacher that says what they want to say and they want a big playground for the kids and they they've got this thing that that they do but we're just as bad because we designed that church to recruit them the same way and then the first little thing comes along and they're disappointed and they're upset and they're gone and and, and whatever, but that that's just a new world. That's the way that we live today. The the, uh, the scriptures today comes from Ephesians 4, 1 through 7, and it's written by Paul, and it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called, with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering and forbearing one another in love. And that says a lot right there, doesn't it? To be able, and what it's really saying there is, uh, you got to put up with each other. You got to love me, even though sometimes you hate doing it. Uh, and that's what that's what the Bible is all about in the New Testament. It's it's about love, and we've got to come to grips with that and understand that, and be able to show that love. Uh, he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In other words, uh, it's hard to do sometimes, but just keep trying. That's what endeavoring means. It, you don't give up. You just keep trying. It, it's not always going to work out. 
And it's not always going to be pretty, is that? And, and, I, and I'm, I don't know that there's always going to be difference of opinion. Uh, but uh, we, if we love each other and and, and we uh, encourage each other and look out for each other and take care of each other, uh, it's all going to work out. And I know you, you think this, and and I got to thinking this too all the week. I studied this. I, I said this. This seems like the same lesson I did the last time. Uh, I keep it, it keeps seems like it's a, the same theme or the same uh, idea going one way. Uh, it says there is on there's one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Our Lord is one faith and one baptism. Now, as you all know, a few months ago, I was baptized for the second time. Uh, that was not necessary. I couldn't get any more saved than I've already been. Uh, But I just felt like, you know, the the series of meetings had been on, uh, it seemed like every pastor that came there talked about the same thing, and they were talking about cleaning yourself up, and and I just thought, well, I just need a spiritual bath. Now, I can't tell you how that lifted me up and how it made me feel and how 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 well I felt after doing it. And I recommend it. Everybody, and that's not to say that every month everybody had to get baptized. If you do that, somebody's done something wrong. And we have only one Lord and one faith. And that faith is the Christian faith. Not necessarily Southern Baptist that we are. Uh, I asked my dad one time when I was uh, uh, way younger, younger. I said, Dad, I said, you know, why are we Southern Baptists? And he said, well, all, or not all religions, but most phases of the Baptist are, 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 are pointed toward heaven. He said, I just think this is the shortest way to get there. And in the straightest way is always the shortest way. Uh, then it says, verse 6 says, One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. In other words, we've got one God who loves us, uh, Sometimes we take for granted his love. I, I don't think we take time to consider how much he does love us. He loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. I, I dare say that any of you out there would do that for somebody else. Um, not judging anybody, just saying. That, that's an awesome God that's, that's willing to do that. Um and he's in us all. He knew us all. He 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 knew in the beginning of time who we were and uh, what we were going to be and where we were going to be. And he knew this moment in the beginning of time that I would be here. And I got to believe that. Uh, that's why I know that this virus is a very serious thing, and we need to take precautions. There's no doubt about that. But there's no sense in being afraid of it. There's no fear in it, because he uh, if I die. Now, it was intended from the day one that that's what would happen. And there's nothing, I I mean, uh, and I'm good with that. But I'm not trying to minimize the seriousness of it. I'm just trying to say that uh, we're protected under a different set of circumstances. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Uh, you know, we can't. Grace is something that God shows us, and He forgives us time and time again. Um, and ain't you glad that we can't fall beyond that grace? That we that we can't. Uh, you can't mess up enough that you can't go to Him and ask for forgiveness. That's what grace is all about. Um, A recap on that, it simply says that many Americans think about church almost exclusively exclusively, in terms of their spiritual needs and what services the church might provide them. These expectations lead them to search for a church with the most palatable preaching, most enjoyable music, and most relevant programs. They basically approach church to shopping, like shopping for a car or surf the web visit the dealership, go on a test drive, and sign on the dotted line. And that's, and that's really where we're at today. That's religion today. Uh, 
are they going to change? No. Are we going to change, try and adapt to getting them up to a point? I'd say, yeah. But other than that, you, you got, listen, you got to get them before you can save them. That's just like fish. You got to catch them before you can clean them. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Now, we don't have any apostles left today, and uh, we haven't had a prophet in a mighty long time, but we do have evangelists. Evangelists is, is really it's what we're called to do. That's what I'm doing right here. This, this may be teaching a class, but it's also evangelism too. Uh, does that make me a preacher? No. Uh, only God can make me a good preacher. Uh, and pastors and teachers, we have those. We have, and, and I think we have a great pastor. I, I truly do. Um, and I think we have great Sunday school teachers. And go and buy just what Luke did on his thing. Uh, he didn't just he didn't come up with all those ideas on his own. Uh, Kelly obviously is in there, and then Miss Lois and Jennifer's in there teaching his Sunday school class, and 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 he's just paying attention. He's he's soaking it up, and he he is so overjoyed in expressing it and sharing it with you. I'm telling you, you've got to look at it. And then verse 12 says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, it's our job. To be, uh, uh, there's no way we can become just like Christ because we can't get over the sin in part. I mean, that's, that's a handicap and that's something that that, that we inherited that we're going to have to live with and all we can do is continuously ask forgiveness for what we've done wrong and the things that we've done wrong um, but we should all be like minded and be of, of one faith we should you know it, it, it's alright to disagree but as a body uh, in the end, if, if we come together as a body and we vote on something, uh, and the church votes it in, whether you liked it or didn't like it, is beside the point at that point, because that's what the church wants, and that's and that that's the way that's in. Um, you know, we we talk about uh, deacons. And I know I, 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 I'm a deacon. I'm not an active deacon. Uh, I enjoyed being a deacon. If you if you like serving people, if you like doing things for other people, uh, you you'd love being a deacon. Uh, but the Bible says it's not a position that you should seek. It's a position that the church should bestow upon you, based on your work in that church. Uh, it says the truth in these verses should transform our expectations of our churches and our leaders. We should expect church leadership to work hard, but they should not have to work alone. That's just like it's, it, it is not the preacher's job to do everything. He's our shepherd. He's here to feed us the word. And, and to be in charge of the, and, and look over what goes on in the church. That's his primary goal. If somebody's in the hospital, that's what de that's what the office of deacon was was created for, was to help the pastor uh, get some of the stuff that he had to do to get things done. If somebody's in the hospital, it's really a deacon's job to go do that. If somebody's in need of something, it's a deacon's job to do that. If, if somebody, uh, if they know somebody that's suffering or hadn't got something, it's a deacon's job to take to take that on. It is not the pastor's job to do that. Uh, it says we expect them to work hard but they should not work alone they have a biblical responsibility to faithfully walk with Jesus and diligently use their gifts to train the body the body then should follow 
their example and join them in the work of the ministry. When we all join together in the work of ministry, the entire body grows in maturity and looks more like Jesus. So, if we do our part, uh, we may not, we may can never quite become Jesus, but we can look an awful lot like Him, and that's what people are looking for. People look at our church and they look at us uh, specifically and say, uh, "Why why why should I go to church? Why why should I be that? I'm as good as He is. He's out here doing things that He ain't in order to do. Uh, there's there's nothing in it. You have to be able to set yourself apart." From the rest of the world. And then Ephesians 4, 14 through 16 says, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of destruction by the slight of men, cunning, craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. In other words, it's time for us to grow up. I mean, we need a heart like a child, but we need a brain like an adult. We need to be able to tell fact from fiction. We need to be able to tell when people are, are, are doing a false doctrine or, or trying to convince us to do things that are ungodly. It says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fit jointly together and compacted by which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Now, if you'll think about how your body works, and God created that, every joint in it has, has a purpose, every, every uh, nerve in it has a purpose, every muscle in it has a purpose. I'm not sure the fat has any purpose, but everything else has a purpose. And he put it there, and it works together. And, that's the, and our, our, our church should work together uh, just like a, a well-functioned body. We should be able to, to, to work together. And I'm, I'm fixing to close, and I've got something else I wanted to read and say. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I contacted a, a young man about doing some work on my house. And somehow or another, I, his, his phone went, anyway, make a long story short, a short uh, he killed himself. And as I understand it, uh, he was a poet, and he wrote this poem about addiction. And if you read this poem, if you listen to this poem, you'll understand what our purpose in life as a Christian truly is. It said, Addiction takes it all. Time, oh time, oh where are you going? This life full of sin. I'm depressed, I'm feeling hopeless. These drugs that I do, they take away all they take all my pain. But only for minutes. I'm sick in the brain. Asking for help, but I get no response. With this gun to my head and this knife in my arm, I'm asking for help, Lord. Why don't you hear me? I'm losing my wife and my life's feeling empty. Going insane and more every day till I'm heat, heating up spoons and I'm bl blasting away. This life that I'm living and all I've been given, I've got three kids, a wife, not to mention a house with two dogs, one cat, and no kittens. And I lost it all, all because of addiction. That was Curtis Todd. You know, how do we, how do we miss seeing people like this? This is our job as a Christian. It's, it's, you know, there, there's so many things that we, we think coming to church makes us a Christian. No, it doesn't. It's what you take away from church and how you use it and how you show these, these people like this the love that they need. That, that it, it, It's just tearing me up at the young people that are, are killing themselves today. When I was their age, I was in the prime of my life. Man, I, I, I had a blast. I, I can't tell you how much fun I can. Is, is life that unbearable today than it was then? So if you see anybody like this, I hope you'll think of this uh, poem. And uh, 
maybe it'll change your mind about where he's at and where he's going. And like you say, my my sister in law told me yesterday. You know, she said uh, said some people, and she's a nurse. She said, you know, some people are able to handle it and beat it, and some people never will. So that's where he's at. So uh, with that, I bid you a good day and thank you. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Day, uh, yesterday was my birthday, so G uh, Jason know how to ask. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.